G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. I have been asked by a member of the Woodworking Masterclass channel to show them how to set and tune a plane. So I've got a number seven Stanley here, I'm just pulling the bits with the blade. I might just give this a quick strop if I can find this drop. Sharpen that whichever way you prefer to sharpen. My personal preference is I like the back to be flat. I know there's a school of thought out there that if you put a five cent piece underneath and then you flatten the back, you're getting an edge. That to me, that's just pure laziness. Once you flatten the back of this, it's fine. It won't need flattening again. So get in there and if you have a look at mine, it's flat. Again, with the chip breaker, make sure that this part here is nice and flat. Even if you've got to get a, a stone and just give it a couple of licks on the stone like that, remember to rock your body, not your, arm, not your arms. And that'll give you a nice firm edge. And it stops shavings from going between the chip breaker and the blade. And you just put it through that hole like that. It's not a good practice to do that and pull it back because you're going to damage your cutting edge. So pull it over this way and then slide it down the back of the blade like that. And that way you're not going to touch your cutting edge. Three thirty seconds of an inch is what I allow between the chip breaker and my cutting edge. Um, you could measure it, but after a while you get to know. And that's pretty close there, I think. You've got to double check it. Actually, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. And make sure that it's square. Because what's going to happen now, when I crimp this down by tightening this screw, it's going to flatten out and creep up the blade a little bit. There you go. That's not too bad. That will do. Now the laterals, which is this thing here, slide that on and just wiggle the lateral a bit and it'll seat the blade because a lot of times you'll put it in and then you've got to use the lateral and it'll go clunk and all of a sudden you've got too much blade hanging out. So I just put it in there loosely Wiggle the lateral from side to side and pick it up, put the cap iron on and you don't want it that you have to hit it with a hammer to tighten it and you don't want it that it flops um, really loosely. So just a nice firm pressure like that, turn it upside down and if you have a look, I've got way too much blade out. So now with the adjuster screw. Just back that off and sight down the sole. I can't give you that shot. If you sight down there, you can just see a hair's width of the blade standing up, but it's high on this end. So to even that up, remember that with the lateral, where it's high, push that lever in that direction. And what it'll do, it'll rock it over. So I push it so then it's high on the other side and then I bring it back to central. You can just flip your finger over it if it's working. I'm going to put a little bit more tooth out on that. A little bit more blade. And I reckon that is good to go. So I'll get a bit of timber. I haven't done any adjustments except for what you just saw and I'll see how close we are. Straight away I can feel that biting in, which is a good thing. And if I push, I think that's going to be good enough. Now judging by the size of the shavings, I can either back that off or make it a bit heavier. That's not a bad shaving for a number seven. If it was a, a smoothing plane, 
I would um, have it a bit finer, but for a number seven, and what you can do to test your blade is go right over onto this side. If you're getting a full width shaving of the timber and then come onto the other side of the blade. And then of course the middle. Okay, let's try a full width shaving. There you go. So that's doing the, the full width. So nothing wrong with that. And that's how easy or how complex it is to set a plane up.